Hello. How you doing, Sue? So tonight we have the intuitive hour with my beautiful Sue. So, 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 my beautiful Sue sister. <laughs> Let me bring her up. Let's let's see. Don't forget to share the live out, guys. I've shared. Oh, my internet's playing up. Here we go. Now, I've probably got a little bit of noise in the background, so bear with me. Hello, gorgeous. Hello. Let me share this live out. How is everyone? How are we doing? Can you hear me? Hey, Debbie. Hey, Debbie. How you going? Hey, how you doing? I can't fucking talk today. What is wrong with me? <laughs> Shit's just sharing the, the live place. out. I'm not being rude. No, I know. Do it. Everybody share, share, share. I've shared it to a few people before share we get started. So life. tonight's a little bit a little bit different, guys. So normally, you know, we were interviewing intuitive souls and beautiful soul tribe about their experiences and about how they came to be this magnificent of that is intuitive intuitive nature and practitioner tonight we're delving a little bit more into one topic which could probably take us elsewhere but we're going to see where that flows tonight and tonight we have lauren the amazing hang on i always seem to stuff this up it's like a tongue twister for me mana, mana kai manawa mana kai manawa which means what does that mean for the people so that don't mana know is prestige strength um in Māori and then kai manawa is also kai to nurture, nutrition, to feed um, and manawa is the breath of life, the heart of life too and all together kai manawa also represents the wild horses here in Aotearoa and I trained one when I was a young girl and she was so stubborn but she was resembles a lot of me so yeah <laughs> mm. i love that i love that it's got such meaning to you as well see so, can you put Passionate. the aircon on for me please it's got really hot all of a sudden oh. anyway it's getting hot in here so to, no. <laughs> i know right <laughs> just the, it's the company we keep I can see myself sort of getting hot. No, <laughs> it's funny you say right, that. So tonight, I was just what, watching Ellie's. I was just watching Ellie's video, and she was talking about you know the company we keep. And I'm like, yes, I keep some good company. Yes, and and it's true because it's it's about the people we surround ourselves with, which is kind of one point we're talking about when we talk about projection right so if we look at the word projection and the way we speak of it tonight um projection i actually looked up the meaning so we've got google on here and projection is the mental process by which people attribute um to others what is their a i'm um, sorry hang on what what is in their own minds so we, we think a person isn't necessarily who they are it's the belief of what we believe them to be right mm -hmm. which a lot of the times we need to be able we need to understand and be able to know what that is in order to have it reflect so to speak so another way of putting it is what you see in others you see within yourself right what what would your take be on that what would your what would be a way that you describe it to people um avoidance a way that people like a coping defense mechanism where people don't want to avoid um parts of themselves and it's easier to see that in other people or let it out on other people. Yeah, so very mm. similar. It's like yeah. what you see in other people 
is usually what you need to work on within yourself. Yeah, because it's it's true in that reflect where um, if you know you could be getting you could be thinking, say for instance, someone has the shits with you, or you know you've done this particular thing, so you automatically think that the way someone's reacting is because of this or because of what you've perceived in your mind to be true, when in in fact it may not actually be that at all. So sometimes it's our minds can be that become so powerful overtaking our emotions, right? Yeah, and I think when I first found out about herd, when I really grasped, started grasping better understanding of projection, at first it was like projection that's so commonly talked about, like, oh, my ex-partner is so insecure, like my partner is so insecure so he must be cheating on me because he's projecting onto me, when actually... What I now can see when it comes to projection is somebody's insecurities <clears throat> not necessarily meaning that they're doing harm or bad things, but it actually can be a projection of their insecurity, um, a projection of their self worth that they're in, yeah that they're insecure and things like that. So projection isn't always necessarily saying that that person's doing something bad it's just sometimes it's that unhealed trauma that is mm -hmm. still sitting there undealt with and so you just yeah sometimes it's easier to paint other people with the brush than realizing that yeah how we are painted hang on a second sorry guys hey everyone Yeah, so another way to describe that is, um, like another way to even look at that is, I've had a situation where I won't name who it is, but I had this person start treating me differently because she thought I had a hidden agenda. So she had made up this assumption about me as a person without even really knowing me to my core and was assuming that my actions or looking for particular actions that were apparently, um, what do I say, deceiving and, and um, narcissistic and all this type of stuff where I, I personally don't feel I have an ounce of that in my body. Um, I my intention was towards her especially because she was a very close almost family to me um i loved this woman and she was like the sister i'd never really had and for her to turn around and then try to make me out to be this person that i wasn't from a place of pure hate and like it's, i'm talking zero to 100 real quick it made me realize that sometimes people are going to have this perception of you regardless of the good that you do. And that in itself is an, another good way to describe projection. And it was because she had so much anger inside. She was looking for something to blame her insecurities on. She was looking for a scapegoat. She was looking for someone to become the victim for. Do you know what I mean? Because she needed that significance. She needed that um, I'm better than you to, to lift herself up because really deep down inside she was hurting. Um, and that's, okay, that's another. Mentality, yeah? Yeah. The mentality can lead to big projections. Big time. I, I, I got stuck there for a bit. And, and it's not. Go back to Jack's, Jack's commented, is that always true, though? My ex tried to say that, but he was doing everything even more than what I thought. And I think that was in regards to me saying how sometimes in a relationship, um, you know, with the insecurities. So going back on that, I think that's the difference, and it's where you have to really sit with yourself in those circumstances and see depending on all the signs 
what type of projection there is there's different parts of projection so there's one way that somebody can project based on being cheated on like for me i projected on my ex-partner before he cheated before he cheated okay because then i painted him with the brush i kept painting him with the brush that he was cheating on me before he had actually done it not excusing it but I was projecting onto him all my insecurities before there was anything actually in the reality of that. Um, and then there are those that are projecting that are cheating. That mm -hmm. um, And usually there's signs where they are, like there's other signs there that confirm that cheating. That's like then they're gaslighting you. Um, yeah. And then there's those other narcissistic emotional abuse traits that come because sometimes those that have gone through trauma do project because it's an easier way to when you're in that victim mentality to be defensive and protect mm -hmm. yourself because you think everybody's attacking you yeah mm -hmm. yeah I, I think it's also when we look at projection from what what we've had happen to us as well um like what you were saying that victim mindset we can kind of be we can sometimes get stuck in that like i've been there i've had to um you know go through moments where i was like you know what my life is shit because of this happening he did that to me or this is the reason why this is all this always happening but really it all comes back it all comes back to one person who has the control and the ability to change everything and it is you it is yourself it is how we perceive the world right so we can wake up and think oh it's fucking cloudy as fuck today where's the sun oh it's gonna be a shit day or we can wake up and be like, oh, you know what? The sun's hiding today. I might have a bit of a cool day today and I'm going to re relax in the cool air and, and get some things done outside that I might not be able to get done during the scorching hot days. Do you know what I mean? Like it's perception. It's the way we perceive the world to be, the way we perceive others to be. So we can look at someone that's doing some pretty shitty things to us and feel like, oh, you know what? I don't like the way that they're being or I don't like this and I don't like that. Or we can see it with compassion and be like, okay, they might be having a pretty shit day, um, and it's not to excuse, it's not to excuse any disgusting behaviour or any disrespectful behaviour. It's about understanding why or pos the possibility of where that's come from, um, and understanding and perceiving on a deeper level. It's that love, a eh? like, yeah. To come with love and that's a whole nother subject in itself love to come mm -hmm. with love for even those that hurt because those that project are hurting and we all yeah. do it um and there's also positive positive to projection too um i've noticed um positive projection when it comes to our friendship it's mm -hmm. like being both here at 10 a um 10 p.m like 10 at p.m 8 p.m us both being here is a positive projection because i notice it makes you really happy when people are on time and i know that that's something that builds a healthy relationship so by being aware of that is also the positive projection that can happen and is so good to happen because it's reflecting on myself okay so i see jen she likes to be on time she loves to share she loves it's got all these amazing attributes and then i'm like oh i see that in you oh i must have those qualities she sees those qualities in me and mm -hmm. it can just it fills the joy so as much as there's a lot of projection in the world that's negative uh, when you start truly healing and that love when you can start loving those that even hurt you that's when i think we can start seeing positive yeah and i just i do want to note too because i can see jacks is saying a couple of things in the in the comments there don't ever ever settle for what you're 
for less than what you're worth. Do you know what I mean? Because if someone is treating you wrongly, then you need to find that power within you to be like Jackson, say, I'm not going to put up with it anymore. Mm. Right. But not saying that it's a projection or it's a reflection of who you are because he's treating you that way. Or if he's, you know, that's his projections. Right. It's understanding what is a projection upon someone versus what your projections are. Right. And sometimes those in the spiritual world and the practitioners can get a bit, your, you know, gaslighting of yourself, right? Because, oh, that's just a projection. You need to go and do the work. Um, no, it's deeper than that. There's so many different layers. And we won't go into too much of that tonight because we could be here for more than an hour, right? But I, I think it's good to note that there are different aspects to things. There are different layers and different levels and different subjects that can go different ways. If that's if you make if that makes sense without being too. When you brought up spiritual, there's also spiritual prediction, and mm. when you're on this journey, we have to be really cautious. I have, as you know, Jen, I have suffered and experienced and learnt the hard way of spiritual projection, where someone has projected their beliefs onto me so much that they've then said like certain things were going to happen if I didn't do what they told me to do so there's mm -hmm. that spiritual projection also um but in, in saying it when you are confronted and put in the path of people's projection and we see our own projection and we can work on it then it does make the world and our lives a lot better um noticing mm -hmm. projection can really help you to work through so many challenges in life because it's mindfulness, yeah. right? You have to be mm. at some point within your lifestyle at prioritizing mindfulness in your life to be aware of projections and to be cautious mm -hmm. of it. Yeah. And I think too, it's good to, to note as well that we are like magnets and we do attract the things that we might need or the things that we need to see or the people that we need around us. And I've just come from a, a four day immersion with Tony Robbins and it was fucking amazing. And one of the things that he says is proximity is power. So it's a lot to do with the people you have around you. Right. Um, and the people you surround yourself with as to where you end up. So if you're not happy in your life, and you find that you're constantly surrounded by drama, um, yeah, sometimes it can be in a little bit of an addiction. I'll be the first to admit that I used to do that. I used to get caught up on the stuff on social media and that he's doing this and she's doing that and such and such is not doing this and all that. It, it's, it's the chemicals that play out in our body um, and it's scientifically proven, not just me saying that. Um, so... <laughs> Don't come for me because I've got the signs to back it up. But it's 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 so much more than that. Do you know what I mean? Like it's it's about knowing that you attract the good stuff as well. You know what I mean? Like you can bring these people. Like I've I've had quite a few people come to me and be like, you know, I've had a reading from you or I've had a bit of guidance and it really helped me and now my my life is amazing. You know what? The guidance might have helped you, but you made the choice. You made the choice to choose you. You made the choice to make that decision. And from that it transpired. So although, you know, I don't want people to go putting people like us on pedestals to kind of be like, you changed my life. No, you changed your life. You know what I mean? You made the decision. You made yeah. the choices and you took the action. We're the messengers. We are the channel. You are the yeah. power. That's it. All we do is it's like we are. People forget that we are connecting sometimes, like our guides, and they're connecting with their higher selves, right? So it's even the message coming through is their higher self choosing that message for them. Yep. That's all the power is within us. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Do we have any questions in the in the chat down below, or do we have anything else?
what is one thing that you do to if somebody's projecting onto you uh, and they're getting quite heated um, what do you what would a skill be that you use to protect yourself or get yourself out of a situation mm. when it comes acknowledging that there is no wrong or right and if it's true for them so say for instance they come to me and they're like oh no you shouldn't do you shouldn't be telling people this or you shouldn't be doing that that's wrong right I'd be like okay I can see why you would think that but I like to think that you know it's about being curious it's not being so we've got filters right in our minds and and patterns I guess you could say and our, it's what creates our belief system and we do this from the time of say three years old up to ten and whatever happens during our life helps shape these belief systems and stuff but as we get older we can then realize that hang on a minute I'm I'm the magical big person I'm the adult I get to choose now it's not just because what mum and dad said it has to be I get to choose. I I get to stand on my own two feet. I'm not going to cop a hiding if I do this or if I choose something different than what mum and dad said, right? Um, not I'm not saying that I got cop to hiding for doing it. I'm just using it as an as an example. And then we get to choose. So it's acknowledging that okay, I can see your perspective, right? And that's perfectly fine, and I I respect that. However, this is mine, and I am being. This is my truth. And we may need to just agree to disagree, and that is okay. However, I like to go in with, hmm, okay, I could see, I, I could see why she thought that, like, and, and get a bit curious to understand how they came to think of that. So I, I try not to shut it down too much and be like, no, that's not the right way, or no, it can't be that way. I try try to get curious and be a bit more like, interesting. Tell me more. Why you feel that way? Where do you think that's come from? And like understanding the how. Mm, yeah. Yeah. What about you? I think I it took me a long time to have it, but notice that somebody's projecting. But now I can notice it. I think firstly acknowledging and reminding myself that it's not my fault and it's not who I am as a person, why this person's projecting. Um, a hard one is expressing that, um, so last week I went through an experience with somebody here and projecting in my home and it was very triggering and I had to stand firm in my boundaries by saying, we're going to stop this conversation now. I'm sorry. It doesn't make me feel comfortable and not giving any, any other reason, just I'm going to stop this conversation here. It makes me feel uncomfortable. I don't even think, I didn't say sorry. I didn't say sorry because I wasn't sorry that that conversation made me feel uncomfortable. I actually wasn't sorry. I'm learning to not say sorry for just somebody else's ill behavior. And mm -hmm. I'm not enabling that anymore. So trying to learn not to say sorry, but being firm. And I had to repeat it straight away instead of allowing them to even just get in there and excusing mm -hmm. that it I had to stay consistent as soon as they and I didn't like the drama I didn't want to feed in this person was talking schmack about so many people and some yucky as things and I just had to instantly just even though some of it was intriguing because it was about me or something like that and I'm like oh but no I had to stay firm this is it mm -hmm. doesn't make me comfortable um we're not continuing this conversation um and then being aware and reminding myself taking like a mental note that this person was projecting onto me and really reflecting whether these people that project onto me are good to be in my circle because of how it made me feel and being very aware of how much energy is taken from me when I am sitting there going mentally in my head having to give all these go over affirmations and power words of like this is not me this is not mine this is not my personal thing and it takes a lot of toll 
I just now I'm like nah you can't even come into my space because I don't want to have a 20 minute conversation with somebody while the whole time I'm not actually paying attention I'm just putting my energetic ball up so. yeah yeah and I love that say, so now I hold space instead of, hang on she's what did she got I heard a saying trying to always be right is trying to prove another wrong so now I hold space instead of trying to be right and push my opinion I love that Donna I love that I guess it's yeah it's kind of like that making me feel uncomfortable or it's not my cup of tea I don't want to and I think that's the longest thing is I've always had like how I got into this behavior too where I've seen that I do it is it was a good reflection on my friendships a lot of my friendships used to enable me and enable the comfortable um shitty behavior of gossip and things like that and mm. so it was comfortable of being in there and so that i enabled that behavior for so long and i sat around gossip for fucking years you know yeah. i'd sit there and freaking honestly i'd sit there with my family while i was going through this healing over the last four years of really trying to feed like the therapy and stuff and get rid of these negative mindsets i remember mm. sitting there watching tv oh look at that fat bitch or look at that skinny boned woman da 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 or oh look at that and it was just like oh and you start noticing it and when you catch on to projection it actually becomes a very sad reality mm. because it is so common. Mm. It is everywhere. Projection on media, projection on the TV, projection with our teachers, our doctors, our our systems. Everything is really based around projection. And what's a massive projection right now in the world? The negativity, the fear. Yeah. And that's what they want us to do. They want us to be fearful. They want us to be fearful because it keeps us in control. Like it keeps us controlled. But when we realize that we can dance with our fears, we can, you know, it doesn't have to have a hold on us, which it, it is a choice. I know people will say, but no, it's not. Uh, it always is a choice. And you can choose to pull against your fears and, and try to stay away from them or you can embrace them and dance a magical dance of life and, and have an amazing life when you learn to tap in and how to do that. And that can help you with your projections and, and the projections of others and, and how it incorporates into your life. Massive. Absolute choice, 100%. Yeah, I feel like it's not all, it's not always a choice when things come up. Like sometimes you don't choose to see it, but when you do, it it's, it can trigger a response, and sometimes it can actually trigger something that does project. Which when you get to the state that we're at, where we understand the when those projections happen, we can then take that away and kind of be like, why do I feel like that, and work towards understanding it a bit more. Like once that veil's lifted, eh, you can't unsee it. That's like um, so many people are like, how do you do it? And I'm just like, I can't turn a blind eye for so long I did. And it was comfortable. I was comfortable turning a blind eye to it. It was more comfortable turning a blind eye to it than actually going towards it and acknowledging it. Yeah. But now... I see a projection, I see somebody's behavior, and I always do. And not everything is a reflection of our own selves. Like, there does come a point where it's like somebody unaliving somebody, right? That's not obviously a direct reflection of you. So it's just the, but it's a perspective. Mm -hmm. And oh, you can't unsee once you see. <laughs> yeah. That's exactly what was said in the comments there. You can't, uh, what was it? Um, once you're awake, you can't go back to sleep. And and fear was actually a projection. A fear projection is what inspired Geraldine into homesteading. It gave her peace and freedom. I love that. Homesteading, is that um, like farming? And, and what, what's homesteading again? Is that like just living like off the land? Yeah, like living off the land and 
I'm a city folk, so you're going to have to explain a little bit. <laughs> Feels good, doesn't it, right? Yes. And when, <laughs> and, and when you start to learn these these things and understand them, life gets so much easier. Like, yeah, there's still a, there's a lot of, there can be a lot of analysis, but you don't have to go as deep as some people do, right? You don't all, and this is what I like to remind everybody, especially us spiritual practitioners. I sometimes have to remind myself. It's okay to do the work. It's okay to, to go and do that stuff. But it's okay to just sit and be too and fucking sit in shit. It's a pendulum swing, right? You can be woo-woo, but you can be woo-hoo as well, right? It doesn't have to be all crystals and sage, right? It, sometimes Sometimes be... it's sage and bullshit. Sometimes it's sage and hood and wish a motherfucker could, you know, or would. <laughs> I'm like, I'm healing, I'm not healed. No. <laughs> exactly. It's the balance because it's the yin and the yang. It's the black and the white. It's the up and the down. It's the earth and the sky. It's And I it's struggle with that. Like just bringing that up, as you know, I struggle by not going in. And it's almost because it's that projection again. You know, um, I'm projecting by going into my fear because I'm so scared of avoiding it again. I am mm -hmm. so scared. So I'm projecting on myself, really. Like, I'm just like, don't. I'm so scared of not doing it, you know. So mm -hmm. it's like, but, but then I remind okay. myself to have fun and to loosen yeah. up. And it's all about the journey. It's all about understanding emotions. I've got a, a thing here in the book. I'm going to. Have a look at where is it? I really liked what it said. It was about um where is it? I read it to you today. Oh about the projection. I think the it was, wasn't it? Yeah. It was um yeah. What stops us from moving forward? Fear. All right? And fear can destroy our psychology and it immobilize us from taking action. All of us experience fear in some context during our lives. Fear of rejection, fear of failure, fear of success, fear of love or losing love, fear of being alone or fear of the unknown. And in fact, it's a lot of the times it's a combination of all of them. Um, it's hardwired, though, into every human being. So if you say you're not fearful, you have been at some point in your life. It's just a, a part of who we are. It's instilled in us because when we were back in the Hunza Gavra days, we needed to understand what fear was so it could keep our body not only knows to need, it needs to keep us alive, our mind, right? And the mind doesn't understand the difference between, you know, make-believe and reality. So... Um, fear is hardwired into every human being and nothing we do in our lives will take this away. But it's learning how to dance with the fear instead of letting the fear control you. And there's only there's two primary fears that we are fearful of. And it, one is that we're not enough. And two is that we won't be loved. And that comes out in our projections a lot of the time. And it, it comes back to patterns, but that'll be another topic. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. There's a lot of projection in the world. Yep, a lot and of fear, but there's also a lot of love. Yes, and if you if you want to have an extraordinary life, you can choose to use that instead of fear. You can like fear will never go away. Um, but you can learn to, and it's an, it's an emotions, emotions. Hang on, here we go. Where is it? I had it down here. And it says, let me find it. Here we go. What controls and determines the quality of our lives? There's a big one. Our emotions. So we've got our physiology, it's what's within our body, how we feel within our body. It's our focus, where our focus goes, energy flows. 
And it's the language and the meaning that we put to that. But that's, again, there's another topic. <laughs> Try not to go too I'm deep. Some contentions too, eh? Yes. It's a whole yeah. other topic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow, we'd be talking for days if we kept going. <laughs> I reckon. No, thank you for, I love it. You know, projection is, um, I've spoken to a few people already this evening, be like, I'm going live and talk about projection. And I must say, four people came back to me with shit. Thanks for bra raising that to my attention. And I'm like, sit with yourself, have a court it all with yourself because the word projection triggers people. And if it triggers you, there's my heat to be done. Mm -hmm. That's what I think. There's work to be done. If the yeah. word projection, firstly, if you don't know what it is, secondly, if it triggers you, those are mm -hmm. the two main reasons that you should go and look up emotional projection, spiritual projection. Mm -hmm. and also get an understanding of how trauma can Interact. lead to okay. projection and how you can be affected when you have trauma and somebody's projecting to you because yeah. it can really it can cause damage mm -hmm. I, I think there is that downside that someone's projection to you and not being aware of that can cause mm -hmm. you mental damage yeah that and is I physical think... though yeah <laughs> And I think it's also good to note too that sometimes it might not even be yours. It might be generational. It might be passed down through your ancestors and you're just not understanding that why don't I fit in because of this, that, and the other. Sometimes it's the work and this is what this is why our generation are so powerful. These healers are so powerful because we're it's stopping with us, right? Our children and our children's children are going to benefit from this because we are doing the fucking work. We are stripping back the layers of the onions and crying like little motherfuckers to, to be able to give them the life that they deserve. Definitely, especially when you sit with, when you brought up, you know, sometimes the projection isn't even ours, it's somebody mm -hmm. else's and it can be intergenerate, like generations back. I felt that because mm. some of the healing that I've done, especially when I've gone into Māori um, healing, when I, they've cleared out blockages within my tenana, within my body, and they've cleared it out, mm. they've raised to me certain particular things, and I'm like, yeah, that's how I act. And they're like, <laughs> yeah, it's because the trauma's not yours, and you if it's if it's not from this lifetime it's really hard for you to spot it it's yeah. really hard and it's through spiritual mahi that you can notice those things and work through it yeah. um the past life type of yeah. or intergenerational I, I, was just, I was literally just about to ask you have you ever done a past life um uh, um forget red red <laughs> I want to say recession, regression. Regression. Recession. I want to say recession. I'm like. I lost my words. I left my, my I, I left my door. I was going to say I left my door. I left my words at the door. <laughs> Come back, um, please. <laughs> no, I haven't. I've been looking at past life regressions and psychedelics to lead down. Those are my. Have you all, speaking of that, there is a series on Netflix. Do you know the one I'm talking about? Did I tell you about that one? That one today, eh? Yeah, I, have to, yeah, I did tell you. So there's a Netflix series. I think it's called, um, oh, fuck, can I remember what it is now? Um, so something about how you think. Fuck, I can't remember it. Um, hang on, I have to look now. All right, while you're looking, I really want to do, I've forgotten the name of it, but I've been looking at people's videos, the the frog one. Oh, the psychedelics. So they burn the first layer of your skin and then they put the frog poisony stuff on the burn and then it goes into your bloodstream. The DMT experience wins. Ah, it's called How to Change Your Mind on Netflix. 
guys if you're interested Netflix how to change your mind I've, I've only watched the ha half of the full three quarters of the first episode mind blowing cool. Issa if you haven't already watched it holy shoot this guy I was blown away with the first fucking um the first five ten minutes because this guy was going to a ceremonial leader shaman or whatever it is and he was going to try lsd am i allowed to say that on here without being flagged i don't give a fuck anyway he was going to try the l i'm going to say the l and <laughs> he the lady was like no um how about we try this first you're not going to fucking believe what it was it was tobacco tobacco in a different form not in this tobacco i don't know what type of form it was but he sniffed it up some fucking tube thing and straight away within minutes he was like having this fucking thing and he was explaining on the voiceover how he felt and what was happening in his body and it was like he felt like these things these stuff was being purged out of him and then he had this real spiritual kind of feeling afterwards and the same thing happens with microdosing. And if you guys have ever watched or if you want to watch, just head to Elevate. So the link is in my bio for the YouTube um, podcast that me and Christy do. We had um, Bryn, who is from the, the US. She is a microdosing guide and she talks about all that kind of stuff. And they're actually using, like we were talking today, even in New Zealand, they're doing studies on the M md stuff i'm not going to say the yeah. whole thing because i get flagged but the md stuff and then over here they're doing mushies so i love the fact that the world is starting to see that these natural things can be utilized to help the things that people are struggling with like mental health and help change have you tried a microdose before me no so oh i back in the day was always like let's just have as much as i can Woo, party blow my brains out not a good experience because it was always with the wrong intentions i'm not gonna lie when i moved in here i did have a moment where i had the opportunity to have some and i don't like worked it all out and i talked to a couple of professionals through recommendations I got them from a family friend so I worked out the how much I was to have I must say I had the most profound experience I sat in here for probably 10 hours um but I had the most I don't know if it was like a past life regression or something but I just no it wasn't past life it was all this life and I went to my inner child and I it took me back to playing and it gave me a remembrance of the innocence like like i used to think i was like peter pan and tinkerbell theory and and it brought me all these beautiful memories of beautiful times and um when i was coming out of it at certain times i noticed where my mind would rush off but then it was like something would veer it back to a positive memory and i've noticed myself i only done it the once but that experience was enough in itself for me to be like, there is something valuable about it, like the proper science. And it's so sad because a lot of the stuff is classed, the mm. top class here. And it's crazy. Yeah. It's... And, and, and that's the thing, right? All you need is, so there's actually psychedelics that can get rid of addictions. I'm talking like heroin, I'm talking like alcohol, I'm talking all sorts of addictions, sex, all that type of stuff with one dose. It can change in an instance. But guess what? It's illegal here. It's illegal in most countries. There's some places that don't don't have it illegal, um, so you'd have to go to those places to actually obtain that. Um, and that's a taboo subject, so we won't go too much down that rabbit hole tonight. But um, I just, I love that the world and the people in it are starting to kind of look outside the square for healings and, you know, 
preaching. It's like, I'll be the first to admit I was anti-drugs from the get-go. I was raised to believe, don't do this, don't do that. If you do this, this is going to happen. And the fear was around drugs. I only ever tried marijuana a couple of times. And even that, I thought I was going to swallow my tongue. I sat there all night holding my fucking tongue and going, I was going to swallow it because that's how paranoid I got. And I used to think I would be end up in the fucking ER. I love your innocence for you just saying, I know I laugh, but I'm like, I would, oh, yeah, be, I that laugh at that it. would be like, I've got your tongue. <laughs> I laugh at it now, but at the time, I was like, my mate, call a fucking ambulance, something's gone, I'm sinking into the couch. Like, I was full-blown, whoa, I was greening out something shocking. So I don't, I never really dabbled in that kind of stuff because I'm high energy as it is. Can you imagine me on something like fucking E or whatever? I'd be like, oh, my God, I love you. I'd be over the top. So, um, but now I have a different perspective i'd have a different understanding you now i spent eight years in the in the government agency that helped with family and domestic violence that helped with homelessness i seen the drug and alcohol um abuse i seen the mental health that it caused and that wasn't a choice right for them they felt like they had no other choice so my perspective of that shifted massively and i have the utmost utmost respect for people like yourself who have been that down that dark alley and found the light and come back out so it's just it's amazing how powerful our mind can be with whatever we tell it to do yeah and also the power of healing my dog's Ooh, trying to get in the I video got she's come and she's just like this is who knows she's just been staring at me as soon as we got on the pod um on this She's just like, give me love. She can hear my voice, that's why. She's like, I'm yes. Jim. Say, give me love, give me love. Say hello. <laughs> hello. <laughs> She's like, okay, there we go, Mum. I'm happy. I'm in the camera. Okay. Oh, my brain doesn't work when I've tried the leaf. Oh. Yeah. I'm doing nothing. Type then. Can't even have a combo. <laughs> the lips don't work, but the mind goes. <laughs> 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 oh, see, I'm. I was a chatterbox, full-on chatterbox. <laughs> I was Clean that the house. friend. I was that friend that everybody invited around just to make everybody laugh and fuck. I'd put people in bubbles. I'd be like, <laughs> and they'd be like, Shh, fuck off, idiot. You're doing that again, aren't you? I'd be like, <laughs> fuck you, bitch. I just laugh at the most. Yeah, I'm a giggler. I, you know what? The only other times that I actually did it was I had to be drinking to have it and they say that you that's the worst time that you, you'd be sick but that's the only time i could ever because if i'm straight i'm too much here and i'm like oh my god i can feel it in my body oh my god like too much could you imagine you with ayahashka gosh <laughs> yeah nah. Someone will get sad I think that's, that's a that's a fair way away from me <laughs> See, mine's the um, traveling and the trust when it comes to the professionals that are doing it, the healers that yeah. are doing it. That's the. Yeah. That's why I haven't done things here in New Zealand, really, because I'm like, nah, I'm just. Um, Issa, have you, Issa, have you tried a Mama A? Ayahuasca. Ayahuasca. Ayah. Ayah. Um, who's got a good... Uh, there's a really good podcast. Um, oh, it's gone off. There was next time I will remember. I'll go and search for it. There's a really good podcast on Ayahashka and mm. the experience with the mother tree and stuff right in the Amazon. It was actually you could probably just go on TikTok and type it in, and that's oh, yeah. you know what I'm going to be doing tonight. <laughs> I'll be sending everybody, oh, look at this one, look at this one. 
<laughs> Careful we the rabbit hole. We should find a retreat and all have the deepest experience together. Mm. Imagine coming back, it would just be like our minds were blown. Our minds are gone. Come back with half a head. Gone. I left it in Peru. <laughs> <laughs> No, Lauren stayed in Peru, guys. <laughs> She's setting up camp. She's not yeah. coming back. <laughs> oh, There's something that I would do too. Yeah, I could see. I could actually, you know what? When you said that, I felt it in my body that I feel like one day that's going to happen. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I kind of just like got like a, ooh, like a, take me there. <laughs> like that's, that's happening. Actually... Yeah. Got connections, just quietly. But that's another day. We'll that's it. the only reason why I haven't travelled, really, because nobody else is wanting to go and do these experiences. So we'll see what comes. Well, if you, you know, I'm I'm sitting here with five different colours on my nails, so I'm a bit out there. <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm getting more out there every day. So who knows what the future will bring? Me too. <laughs> I've been to Australia by myself. Who knows what's next? Yes. But next time you come, come, you'll have to come see me. Yes. Yep. All righty, guys, I might jump off. It is nearly 11 o'clock. I'm going to hit the bed soon. Yeah. I'm going to hop off for a bit too, guys, but I will probably come back in the next half hour, 45, just to do some readings and pull some cards for my regs because um, I've missed your faces. I've been a while, been a minute, been all sharing, sharing my TR experience with you. And, um, but, yeah, thank you so much, Lauren, for coming on tonight. I love you. I appreciate you so much. It's always a vibe when you're here. It just, just fucking flows. Like, I didn't even have any questions. This was the, literally the only thing I wrote down was the projection thing from Wikipedia. I just wrote to talk about spiritual projection and positive projection, and then that's it. <laughs> I was like, we'll go with the flow. <laughs> right. Let our intuitions and guides guide us. Yes. But thank you so much. I love you all. Have an amazing night. Mwah. Guys, I'll be back soon.